Welcome to Shiny Sunshine Lounge, where we learn from those who are hard to their crafts and their businesses. I have an awesome entertainer, Alex Harris, to share a little bit about himself, his craft, and being in an entertainment business. Alex is more than a golden throated pretty boy. This brother got soul. And if you don't know the difference, you might want to keep listening. Alex, thank you for joining us here at the lounge. Well, I'm so glad to be a part of uh, the lounge and uh, just have a conversation with you all uh, on today. We are excited about having you here. So we're going to jump right in here because I'm excited. (laughs) (laughs) So I want you to share a little bit about yourself and what had you become an entertainer. Well, um, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I grew up in Georgia, mm-hmm. a little small town called Manchester, just outside of Atlanta. And it is um, maybe even closer to Columbus, about 30 minutes. Uh, Atlanta about an hour, just to give you a geographic location. But uh, I'm one of eight children, five boys, three girls. I'm in the wow. middle. <laughs> So we grew up uh, singing and singing around the house. Um, my, our father's a pastor of a small congregation. And so we know about the, the long uh, church services, the long revivals. Uh, and so very, very um, connected to music. Uh, music wow. and education was a big deal for us. So learning uh, our parents instilling into us character, um, behavior, uh, p- principles as well. Um, the importance of loving ourselves and loving others, um, and, uh, loving family. So, uh, that's, that's who I am. Um, and, uh, that's my music I started out. My brothers and sisters, we would travel all uh-huh. over for us. It was all over Georgia. Um, you know, and the small yeah. t- cities that you may not. <laughs> I hear of, uh, Rome, Georgia. <laughs> the first time I hear about Rome, okay. and, uh, uh, it was in Georgia. So, okay. but various, um, um, we hear like, uh, Nashville, Georgia. <laughs> you probably okay. know. Alex. You're in and out. <laughs> Alex. Yes. <Relax. laughs> not breathing. <laughs> You're not breathing. You're like, let me get all of this out. Breathe. I'm excited. Breathe. You breathing? Yeah. Take a deep breath for me. <laughs> I'm excited. There you go. <laughs> okay. So you you grew up um, eight children, right? Yes. Uh, y'all y'all traveled a lot, and and your family instilled a lot of music. So y'all were musically inclined. Did you start singing? Um, what age did you start singing? I started singing at uh, seven years. Well, I started younger than that, but I started singing with my brothers and sisters. Uh, we traveled when I was seven years old. Okay. Wow. Okay. Do they still sing as well? Well, um, yes, we all still are musically engaged, I would say, uh, that way. Um, however, I'm pretty much the only one um, who's doing the music um, professionally, um, and my youngest sister, she sings, but she sings and acts. And I think she acts more than she actually sings professionally. And then I have two of the brothers who are in the music industry and the others are in different careers. Wow. Okay. That's pretty cool. So when did you, um, when did you decide to go solo? Was that like when you were older or what made, what was, what was the, like when you step to step it's like okay I want to do something different with your music well, um, I I think it was more organic believe it or not it wasn't a thing where uh, with some groups you may see on a documentary or something where the person who sings or one of the band members want to go solo and they feel it it wasn't that way with me it was more of a um, it happened let's say happenstance it it it, um my other siblings wanted to do pursue other things other professions and um 
I was like, and I try to believe it or not, I was trying to hold it together. And even though I was the lead singer for the, for the family group, mm -hmm. uh, I was trying to, you know, keep everyone performing together. And, um, until one of my brother, well, two of my brother, my, my brothers, um, said, well, why don't you just do solo? You know, that's what, you know, you're, you're consistent in what you do, blah, blah, blah. And so after thinking about it, um, I, I started to, um, explore that idea and then I'm still wasn't sure exactly what my sound, what my vibe would be, uh, mm -hmm. as a solo act. And so I took some time to just explore that. Um, okay. during, during that time, I, uh, you know, I started doing some other things related to the arts, but not performing, mm -hmm. I, you know, started the foundation and so on and so forth. So it's, it's, oh. uh, okay. So we're going to talk about that. Um, Real quick, how are you taking care of yourself during the, this pandemic? You know, um, a couple of things. Um, on the on the um, musical side, I've been just uh, writing, producing music. Uh, uh, actually, if if I could, or if I would thank the pandemic for anything, it would be to say uh, that because of the pandemic, I was able, I wouldn't say because, but I, the pandemic happened, let's just say it that way. And right. I, and I, and I, and I took full advantage of it in a positive way. And that way was to finish my recording. And hey. uh, yeah, right. Yeah. And so <laughs> today, uh, doing this because during the time of the pandemic and uh, starting during the national lockdown, it's like, what do we do? We're not going to any studios. I'm not flying anywhere. And um, finished finished the music and a lot of the inspiration from some of the songs that that's on the EP uh, mm -hmm. happened during the pandemic. So I I'm I'm uh, I've found cool. gratitude in this and I'm trying to stay yes. away from crowds and do everything yes. I can do to stay healthy and thank thankfully um, nothing uh, yeah. tra tragic has happened close to to my family and of course I send prayers and to others who have experienced that though. Absolutely. I'm glad to hear that, that, that you did take advantage of that. That's actually really important. Um, I think a lot of people, um, uh, don't realize that as terrible as this is, um, there's a gift in it and being able to, um, work on things that you wouldn't have had time to do before. And now you have that, that time to utilize, um, the energy in the time in, in it. So I've, I've been, I've been grateful for that. It is, um, and I'm North Carolina. Um, and, um, we're sitting outside the convention center and I had this idea that grew to vision and so on and so forth to be able to give back to impact those who are less fortunate. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, I end up, um, launching, um, in, uh, on the south side of St. Petersburg, which happens to be one of the lower income communities. Um, lacking accessibility um, to the opportunities or the resources for okay. students to excel to their fullest potential, um, academic fullest, pot fullest potential, um, their emotional intelligence and and their skills and so on and so forth. Um, but um, that led to really developing and taking my own experiences and start to develop a curriculum. And then, of course, I met um, some great people, one becoming my business partner and yes. uh, others becoming uh, founding board members for the, uh, uh, for the organization. And we have impacted thousands of students since we started. And That's beautiful. we are concerned about 2,500, uh, 35 to 3,500 students. We're talking mm -hmm. about high school students throughout, uh, the, the Tampa, St. Petersburg, Clearwater area both Hillsborough awesome. and Dallas County. And we are positioning to do a spinoff um, of our organization that will be a mobile impact opportunity in 2021. Wow. And so yes. that was going to go around the country and abroad um, with our, our next initiative. So keep your ears tuned because Woo! I'm just say we have seen, this is the yes. real impact because you keep hearing me say impact. The yes. impact I'm talking about is in an area where there was an accelerating rate among African Americans and Latino Hispanics of, mm -hmm. of dropping out of school, 
we stepped in and I said, we, my team and I, and mm -hmm. with the vision that I was entrusted with, I give all glory to God. Yes. And, um, you know, to, to, uh, change that, that accelerating, uh, dry, uh, dropout rate to wow. 1% of our students. Every student that came through our doors and experienced our program graduated with a diploma. That is beautiful. And, um, and, uh, and then 90% where there, um, it wasn't a lot of, uh, higher educational, uh, yes. interest for some of them. Uh, others had interests but didn't know how or where to start. 90% mm -hmm. of our students have gone on to higher education institution. Other 10% wow. of the students have entered into the workforce prepared and are performing well. I'm talking about Broadway. I'm talking about producer jobs at uh, major film companies. I'm talking about major recording contracts. I'm talking so about entrepreneurs, all from my foundation of and and I'm so grateful. So when I say impact, that's the way yes. in our lives, my siblings' life. So I wanted to uh, reciprocate that in a gra in a grateful way. To, to, I, to that is uh, that is so beautiful. I, um, I'm going to come back to that because I want you I want you to actually share the actual foundation information. But we're going to come back to that a little bit later. Uh, um, we have a few more questions that we're going to run into, but before we start that um we're going to hear uh, your new your song okay we're going to dj we want to hear rolling awesome let's get it all out in the open let's have that talk what you want to know Got no regrets Cards on the table I settled all my debts I cleaned up my mess Oh yeah I was rolling In and out of love Trying to find my way to you I was living, burning Baby, I was hurting Now I'm only burning for you And baby I got no secrets Or to hide As imperfect as I am Never tell you lies I wish I Knew your way back then When I was rolling In and out of love Trying to find my way to you I was living, learning Baby, I was hurting Now I'm only burning for you perfect song to bring a smile to your face uh, <laughs> <laughs> so share something that that surprised you as you were producing this song you know I guess doing production is always full of surprises one of the greatest 
uh, surprises of, of this entire pro- production for this EP, including Roland, has been um, producing it in a time and in a way that I never would have dreamt of doing mm-hmm. production. Um, as a soul artist, I love the environment of being, uh, of the opportunity to be in the environment where I can interact with the other musicians and other producers and engineer. Just mm-hmm. kind of way, not just the soul artist. I mean, a lot of it doesn't matter what genre. I think as a musician, we are a creator. We love to be in an environment of creators. I mean, few people like work, working isolated. Right. Um, perhaps, but I think for the most part, I think it would be, uh, uh, a truth to say that, that, uh, we enjoy as a whole, as a community, um, especially the creative uh, minded folk being, uh, among other creators, right? It's just yes. the stimulation. So, yes. you know, the surprise has been that, you know, as a creator, we are able to find a way in the virtual space and develop this body of work. And it, 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 it was, it was okay. It was cool. We, I enjoyed it. You know, it it sounds like you had a lot of fun doing that. I had tons of fun. Um, (laughs) I I must say though, I was really a little nervous. I was really scared because I'm accustomed to having a audio engineer and somebody assisting and I'm just kind of walking in there in the creative moment. This, I, you know, I was playing, recording my own vocals and, you know, ordering, <laughs> had to order the equipment because there, because no one knew that, I mean, we didn't know a studio on the pandemic was going to hit. And when it did, when we heard about it, we didn't know it was going to have the impact that leads to a lockdown that so right. much we didn't go to studios and we weren't doing anything. It was just, you know, um, confined to our own home. And so, yeah. um, Hey, it was a self-discovery that I'm always talking about self-discovery, uh, mm-hmm. to other creators, um, teenagers who are in our foundations or even other folks who are not in my, who come to talk to me. And I'm like, you, know, you gotta, you know, you gotta be creative. You gotta find a way and can't be confined to one way of doing the things. One way of doing it. That's that. right. And That's self-discovery right. about what's, what's in there that you didn't know existed. Right. And yeah. so that's what happened to me. And so I became an, um, I experienced what I have uh, talked about for a number, a number of uh, times with with many folks in my environment. So that's that that's that's that is amazing. Thank I you. I love it. All right, so we're gonna slide over to a little bit more lounge talk. So I want you to share um, two two foolish things or naive things. Um, that come to mind that people that you've seen people do in the entertainment business. <laughs> Two first things. Um, okay, I'll, I'll say it. I, I can respond to that. I think that um, a foolish or unwise or whatever uh, descriptive we want to put to it, I would say um, sometimes I think we uh, are tempted, and I've seen it happen. Uh, often uh, where we believe our own billboards. Um, And I think that is, it can become foolish. I think we're supposed to celebrate um, our wins and whatever that win is for each artist Mm -hmm. or entertainer. However, I think we cannot become naive um, to uh, the importance of, of growth and the humanness that you know, we are, we are human and, um, and we can't, and, and, and to believe that we invincible. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think that is a very uh, unwise way of thinking and it, it leads to um, what we categorize as foolish behavior, you know? And so yeah. I think that um, we can't, you know, and so that's something I've seen and, and uh, I, I, uh, very, very aware of that. So, of course, when you're aware of the potholes yes. in the road, you try not to go. <laughs> you try not to <laughs> rock your car. So, uh, uh, that's what I love when I've been in many cities for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so that's what okay. I was saying. That's what's up. So, okay, so what was the toughest lesson you had to learn? 
Well, uh, you know, I think the toughest lesson is to, uh, I should say I am learning, um, is to always know that there um, is, um, let me, let me frame it this way. Sometimes when you, when you do uh, produce a, a composition or a piece of music or material, or whatever um, you think, and you feel really great about it. Um, I think I've learned over, I, ha- I have learned and continue to learn that uh, there is always a room for exploration to expand upon that creativity. I wouldn't say necessarily for improvement because it's, sub, it's uh, really subjective, but um, mm-hmm. because you can find and you can discover so many um, different uh, approaches to, mm-hmm. to the development or to, to the production. So I, I am, you know, doing music and you feel really great about it. I've, I've learned and continue to practice and learn. And, and in this process, the lessons that, um, that I'm being taught is to always be open minded and always remind myself to be open minded and, and to engage that. Because as a creator, sometimes we can get so connected to what comes from us, right? And we, and because we have that connection and because it comes from us, it I come through us rather. Um, yes. It, 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 we, there's a certain kind of connection that is, is not with anyone else necessarily. At least that's what we would like to believe. And so to let go of that and to embrace other creators or other, um, uh, ideas, whether it's objective or objective, um, okay. coming from some other place, I think. And so that, that can be one of the most greatest challenges it has been, could, uh, could still be today. So it's very important for me to, I always remember that. Yes. Always be open-minded. I know that 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 can be challenging when you are a creator because um, when when you're working on something and you've put your, your, your heart and soul into it, it's, um, it can be difficult for you to allow somebody else to say, okay, what about tweaking this or what about that? Because you're like, this is my baby. Right. You know, and so, um, I know for myself as, as I've grown, um, I'm a lot more open minded to that. Whereas when I was younger, um, performing, um, on a stage and stuff like that, or even writing and working with people, it was, it was challenging for me to be able to actually see that. So, um, I got one final question here. Hold on. You, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. So my final question is, what is the hardest choice you had to make regarding the entertainment, uh, your entertainment career? I think uh, the hardest choice I've had to make today, um, you know, I think I guess like a couple of thoughts come to mind. What I what I have to learn to embrace is that um, you're going to work with a lot of people and some people are not going to go with you all the way. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, that's very important, uh, especially coming from a family like mine where everybody's close knit and I learned the, the importance of family. So even when I work with people, I, I see in them as family. Um, I think that's a big, that's a big lesson that everyone, um, that, uh, is a contributor to you, um, doesn't necessarily mean that that person or persons going to be with you your entire, uh, career or just the entire uh, duration of that particular project. project. Um, mm-hmm. And you're in learning to um, be willing to let go because sometimes we can string along um, things and people and ideas and thoughts that, uh, that are not healthy for growth. It's kind Absolutely. of like a plant, right? You yes. Know, yes. You have to embrace the beginning and you have to embrace the middle and you have to embrace the growth process to your highest point and whatever your career, whatever you're doing and, and know that just because this was your starting point and everything that contributed to that or um, ideas or practices or people are not necessarily healthy for the next phase of what you're doing or what you're going. And that's the yes. thought that I have to embrace and, and learn in my practice and my creative practice, uh, 
and uh, is not necessarily the easiest peel for me. Uh, <laughs> I love, I love and, and you still can love people and just because, you know what I mean? And then there are yeah. some things that are going to always be with you. You have to embrace that and, 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 and appreciate that as well. And um, people or mm-hmm. things or ideas. Are, and so I, I, I think that, that finding that balance can be uh, a great challenge, you know, when you're Absolutely. learning. Absolutely. Because, yeah, because when you, when you're, when you're growing, the people that, that water you so that you can grow and move on to the next thing may not be the same people that are supposed to stay with you during, during um, the duration of whatever you're doing, but they're just like, um, they're, they're there to get you started. And then you have the people that, that plant the roots and they're with you through the whole ride through everything, but you're going to have, have, have different people that are going to water you and, and they're meant to water you, but to help you grow and to go on. So, um, yeah, that's that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that that oh, wisdom. Thank that is- you. <laughs> I, it. I, you know, I really appreciate this opportunity and uh, just to share and have a conversation with you uh, means a lot. Thank you for sharing the music with the audience as well. I appreciate that. Yes, we we are so excited about that, um, about your project and and your music and being able um for everybody to be able to hear what you have to offer is is yeah. is awesome so um tell me the name of the foundation and then i want you to tell me what you have on your plate what do you have coming up sure so the name of the foundation is arts conservatory for teens arts conservatory for teens and you can find it by just googling that on uh, tampa uh, I'm sorry, St. Petersburg Arts Conservatory for Teens dot org is a website. But um, my um, what I got coming up is the Frequency EP, Frequency whoa, whoa, whoa. EP, uh, six song EP. <laughs> Roland is on there. A lot of great other uh, songs that I'm uh, super excited about, and uh, I really uh, wanted to evoke my own soulful experience coming up from. Georgia and uh, just growing up there, uh, I like to refer to as the dirty uh, uh, south of the red clay hills of Georgia. Yes. <laughs> My brother actually lives uh, um, in uh, Lawrenceville. Oh, yes. Very, yeah. very familiar. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually I actually um, went there um, in March, right before, you know, the sky nice. fell out. <laughs> <laughs> to, to visit to visit my niece because she off. decided she wanted she wanted to see me. She was trying to figure out how to get me there for her birthday. She's five. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. So, so I could, I could of, um... I, yeah, I could make it to her party. So I surprised her and went for spring break. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much. For being a guest on Shiny Sunshine Lounge. It was such a pleasure. I'm Shiny. This is a Sunshine Lounge. Until next time, I'm sending you love, light, and hugs. Thank you.